Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott McKillop. If I look vaguely familiar, it's because I'm usually hiding behind the cross playing guitar for you and Jesus. Um, but I'm also on the church board, and uh, I'm also the treasurer of the church. I was um, on vacation a few weeks ago, <clears throat> and in my absence, they elected me treasurer, which I thought was kind of interesting. I'd, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, not, yeah, I'm not sure why they put a guitar player in charge of the money, but they did. That's, that's another story. But um, I'm really here to just uh, briefly say two things. One is thank you. Um, as you know, we've been uh, struggling with our finances recently, and Peter and others have put the word out, asked for uh, your support, and good news, you, you heard us, and the giving has improved and the level of support has gone up, and we've averted uh, worst-case disasters. So that's, that's good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Good. And the, the other uh, message I wanted to deliver was to ask you to please keep it up because uh, <laughs> uh, we, uh, we want to make sure that we get the message out. The, I think the message that, uh, that we send from the sanctuary is very important, especially these days. Um, Peter's going to keep preaching, the band's going to keep playing, and if you keep uh, supporting us at the level that you have been, we'll be in great shape. So um, again, thanks very much and uh, keep up the good work. Um, now I'd like to ask Matt Kinner to come up. Matt's been, uh, we formed a finance committee to, to deal with some of the financial issues we've been having, and uh, Matt has played an important leadership role in that. Um, in fact, I'm going to appoint him chairman of the finance committee, like they did to me with the treasurer <laughs> position. So here's the chairman of the finance <clears throat> committee, Matt Kinner. Morning, everyone. Um, so uh, I have a question for you guys. It's an important question. Um, it seems that the predominant story in the Christian church in the world today is a story of a big cosmic battle uh, between God and Satan over the soul of mankind, right? And in this story, uh, God sends his son down and he sacrifices his life, and those who believe are brought up to heaven, and those who don't end up in eternal torment. Um, that's the predominant story that we're hearing in Christianity today, and I just want to ask you, if we think this through for a minute, um, if we're really honest about the numbers, what percentage of people are professing Christians um, in, in, a, in contrast to those who have not heard or have not embraced Christ throughout the whole history of the world? It's maybe 10%, 15% of the entire world's population. So the story that's being told is a story that, uh, you know, Jesus gets this little sliver of humanity to heaven, and the lion's share of humanity ends up in eternal despair. So my question for you is, who won the battle for man's soul in that story? Who's the winner? I mean, let's be honest. Who won the battle in that story? I think it's pretty clear that in that story, Satan wins. The lion's share of people end up in eternal torment, and a small piece of, po of the people of God's creation end up in, e in eternal bliss. I think that's a poor story, and it's not the true story of the gospel. So I have good news. The opposite of that is the message that we preach in this church, and it's good news. It's exciting news. We have scriptures on the walls throughout this church that are telling a very different story, like when Jesus says, Behold, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men into myself. Um, when Paul says, As in Adam all have died, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. This is a very different story, and it has a very different impact. Um, I personally struggled with this shift in understanding that God is in the business of saving everyone, not in the business of saving a small piece of humanity. And um, the impact it had on my life, I won't go into the details because I don't have that much time this morning, but it changed my life completely. It changed how I view people, and it changed how I view God. And that's pretty much revolutionary in my life. It's changed everything about me. The fruits of this message have been beautiful in my personal life. So I want to invite you to sit with a minute, with me for a minute, and just sit in amazement of God's work in this church. And I just want to share some thoughts with you. I want you to think, first of all, isn't it amazing what this church does? Isn't it amazing how God has blessed this church? Let's think for a minute about the reach of this church. This is a small body of people. We're not that big of a church. But we have a sister church in the Philippines on the other side of the world who has 
10 pastors leading communities in the mountains of the Philippines, teaching the same message. It's a direct impact of this church. We have pastors throughout Europe, throughout America, that reach out to Peter on a regular basis and tell him how this church and the message that we share every week changes their lives is having a huge impact on them, having, helping them to change the story that they're, that they're telling their congregations. And it's just, it's beautiful. Isn't it amazing that we're a part of that? I just want to thank you for being a part of that. Um, the impact that we have is amazing. The reach that we have is amazing. And I also think that the building that we have here is amazing. We have a beautiful facility that we've been given by God, and I think it's a huge blessing. And I just want you, guys, you all to know that you're a part of this. Um, God blessed us. I don't know how many of you know the details. I was part of the purchase of this building, but we purchased this building for $50 per square foot. I know as a builder, I'm a builder by trade, I know it would cost at least $500 a foot to build this building. So we bought this building at 10 cents on the dollar for what we paid, what we would have to build it for. Um, we, we bought this building for $50 a foot, which is what a lot of businesses pay for rent every year. It's not unheard of at all in the Denver community to, for businesses to pay $50 a foot per year in rent. We paid $50 once and we own this building. Those are amazing stories. God is at work in this church, and it's amazing. And I want us all to revel in that for a minute, to give God the glory. And I'm just thankful that you're all a part of it. And um, <clears throat> I want to, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Um, I want to share a little bit about the finance committee. So the other thing that amazes me about this is it's a nonprofit. What that means is we have no way to generate revenue except through you. We, we're not out selling widgets. We're not making money in any way. We are 100% extension of you. If you're a part of the sanctuary, if you give your time and your finances to the church, that is literally the nutrition. You're giving this body the nutrients it needs to keep the work it's going. So we are literally an extension of you, and we are a body that has great impact, and we're, we're an extension of you. So I want you to remember that you are the sanctuary. The sanctuary is not just the staff. The sanctuary is not just the message going out. The sanctuary is you. You are the lifeblood of this church. And it's an amazing, beautiful story, and I'm really grateful to be a part of it. So as part of this finance committee, um, managing a nonprofit is really hard. We have ups and downs. Giving is up, and then it's down, and most of our giving comes at the end of the year, and it's hard to manage that. So it's hard to really understand the financial health of the organization. Um, and we get in moments like this summer where we start to panic because our finances and our emergency cash reserves start to get really low. Um, so we came up with a new metric that we're going to put in the bulletin every week, and it's going to show on a scale... Sasha, if you have that image, um, basically it's just going to show uh, from a cash flow standpoint where we are on this spectrum, okay? Because it's, it's really hard, it's really complicated, but we're going to make it really simple for you. We want to be in the green all the time, okay? When we're in the green, um, we're going to report this every month and we're going to have that dial. It's going to say, are we in the green? Are we in the yellow? Are we in the orange? These different levels. And if we're in the green, the church is healthy and it's paying its bills. It's not using its emergency cash reserves. The church is healthy. We want to stay in the green zone. So we're going to report this every month. And this is your cue as, as you being a part of the body. If you see that metric move into the yellow without having to know all the details of all the finances, you know, hey, we're starting to get back into those troubled waters and it's time to give what you can and help us to get back into the green so we can keep doing what we do, sharing this really important life-changing message. Um, so each one of these levels has specific action items. I won't go into all the details, but for example, if we hit yellow, we start a spending freeze. If we hit orange, uh, we have to actually start cutting some staff. If we hit red, we put the building on the market. If we go into deep red, we go to all volunteer staff until the building sells. So it, you know, it's, it gets pretty extreme, but our hope is that we never get down to those lower levels. We haven't gotten really even into the orange yet so far. And we want to stay in the green. And so this is a simple metric we're going to share with you. And we hope it'll help you to be connected. And I just want you to remember that there are lots of reasons to support the sanctuary. Um, but I'm going to just summarize again. The sanctuary is a different story than what is being told, number one. Number two, it has a great reach. Number three, it has a huge impact. And number four, because you are the sanctuary. So remember... As the scriptures say, God is love, and love never fails. So, thank you.